morning, everyone. Welcome to the Being Your Own CEO Success Circle. Uh, we get together because we like each other's company, because we like sharing experiences and experimenting and uh, learning from each other. Uh, uh, plus, it's just a lot of fun. So my name is Lowell Land. And I call myself the Elder Geek uh, because I really like helping um, retirees who want to um, to do some uh, work online and or start a business online. So, um, and uh, oh yes, I wanted to say what we're going to talk about this morning. We're going to talk about how to find blog and or vlog ideas. So, uh, but before we get to that, I'm going to invite uh, those that are here to introduce themselves. And I'm going to, oh, I see here comes a, here comes a, another person. So I'm going to change the view now to gallery view. And uh, Dave, uh, David, you were here first. So how would you like to introduce yourself? Okay, I'm Dave Flannery. I'm with Affordable Websites for Small Business in Rock Falls, Illinois, in the middle of the United States, northern part. Um, today we've got a little bit of sunshine, a little bit of clouds. It's cool. It's it's going. The high is going to get roughly about zero today Celsius, and or 34, 32 degrees Fahrenheit for those in the United States that use Fahrenheit. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm a minority. I can see right now. Everybody else uses metric system. <laughs> so um, we are broadcasting on um, YouTube and in the website. Quite fine. There's no problems at all. Good. Right on. So thank you, David. And I do appreciate you being my wingman. <laughs> so. <laughs> So, uh, Javita, how would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. I'm Javita from India, and I love affiliate marketing, and I teach people to start their own online business with the help of uh, affiliate marketing. And my website is advantageaffiliates.com. Aha. So, so glad you made it this morning, Javita. Thank you. Um, and um, I'm sure I'm, I'm looking forward to our discussion as I bet you are too. <laughs> yeah. um, so Fred, uh, you are here next. Yes, thanks Lol and, and it's good to see Javita, even though it's evening now in India, it's hot morning. Uh, Vivek isn't here, so someone has to represent the uh, community. <laughs> I'm sorry that Vivek's not here again. Anyway, I'm Fred Jones, the creator of Our Future Leaders, where we assist our youth to gain the communication, leadership skills that will help them to become the leaders that our world needs so badly. And uh, I'm currently in Ladysmith on my friend's boat, hiding away from COVID-19. And it's rainy a little bit today, and it's about six degrees centigrade, which is pleasant compared to Dave's zero degrees mm -hmm. centigrade. <laughs> so, and, I don't know. I've, I'm, I'm excited. I, we've got a sort of a conference call or a Zoom meeting on Sunday morning at 7.15 a.m. And I've got, um, well, at least two confirmed and another couple who I've asked young people to join in and it's sort of an international meeting because it's in Nepal, the fellow I'm working in Nepal, another lady in Romania. So it should be exciting. I'm excited about uh, Sunday's early morning session. Mm -hmm. The early morning is a challenge. Young people on weekends love to sleep in. To get them up at right. seven o'clock in the morning to join a Zoom meeting is going to be interesting. <laughs> anyway, that's the excitement of the week. Now, Fred, um, just in case you um, you think those young people are are um, I mean uh, most teenagers um, are, do like to sleep in, 
And I remember a number of years ago seeing a scientific study that showed that uh, in those teenage development years, they do need more sleep. Yes. So it's not them just being lazy. It's a, oh, it's, it's a biological need. <laughs> yes. I know. I, I, I think I've heard of the same yeah. uh, report that you mentioned. Yeah. yeah. No, it's you mean, so you mean when I was yelling at my son and telling him he was a lazy bum that, that I was wrong? Yes, you are. <laughs> yes, you are. Some, some school systems have taken that into account and start later in the day, mm -hmm. like 10 a.m., because that's when they're starting to function. Mm -hmm. Not the 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. that some school systems think are the right thing. Yeah. So anyway, it's interesting. Uh, I'll see what happens on Sunday. It should be a uh, fascinating yeah. day. Great on. Oh, it's fun that you're uh, working in the international world. Don't we all just love it? <laughs> uh, so I'm glad you're here, Fred. So Alana, you made it. I wasn't sure whether you um, were going to be occupied this morning or not. So I guess you probably got my little message. I did get your little message and um, I was trying to finish up some things so I could make it here on time. Um, so I just about made it. Um, Alana here from Ireland. My website is ALB Digital Marketing Solutions and I help people with copywriting and web administration and SEO. Aha, right on. And I know that you're doing a lot of things. Hey, Vivek, you made it just in time. Namaste. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know that you had to work this morning or in the morning. So it's it's evening for you, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I, it's, I had to work and then uh, got stuck in traffic and it's uh, unbelievable. It, I, it, it Just at the end of this road, I got stuck for five minutes. <laughs> oh dear oh, wow. i could just uh, uh stop the car and get out and walk home in a minute <laughs> anyway yeah <laughs> do you want to introduce yourself and i see you've got our website for courses up Woo! <laughs> <laughs> namaste my name is vivek anand i believe in simplicity so that's what I try to do, bring different technologies together to make uh, life easy. So. Aha. So um, are you going to say something about website for courses now that, oh, you've changed it. <laughs> <laughs> you could yeah, website for courses is a project uh, um, myself and Lowell and are working together so it, it's not yet ready so yeah <laughs> uh well well we're we're not too far off now we've we've um yeah yeah we've um <laughs> we've uh, vivek I, I i should tell everybody um we are working on the this course that everybody told us we ought to create <laughs> and it's going to be called the of course course <laughs> That was what uh, Paul Murray uh, suggested. We thought that was kind of a funny name. That would, that would make everybody so. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's what we're calling it, and um, we've been working on uh, some things. And we, we discovered um, Vivek discovered a kind of a, a shortcut approach. And he's been working on um, putting in some new coding because of this shortcut approach. So in the long run, it's going to be, the whole process is going to be simplified. So stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and let me tell you, I have learned so much from just um, um, this exercise that we're working on together. So. <laughs> All right, so now let's, uh, boy, that, that took us off, uh, um, <laughs> off our topic. 
And hey, there is. Sorry, I've heard that. <laughs> there is Bill Graham out there in uh, YouTube land saying, just stop by for a few minutes. Well, Bill, welcome here. <laughs> so <laughs> nice to uh, see you there. Um, Bill Graham was um, used to be part of this group until his life changed, and uh, he's. Um, uh, I have, there's another person I have certainly have learned a whole lot from. So anyway, so now our topic this morning, as I said, was to how to find blog and vlog ideas. So I. I wanted to start off, and this is there's no we we don't have a presentation. This is basically just a conversation, um, sharing ideas and what we know. So um, I guess my first question would be: How many of us are writing vlogs and or planning on doing vlogs? Um, so I might I might begin by saying I. I do um, blogs less frequently than I once did. There was a time when I did one every Monday, but I got um, busier and busier, and uh, so it's less frequently, but I am doing blogs and vlogs. So, um, so that's me, and I saw uh, Fred, you, uh, are doing both, aren't you? So uh, Fred is doing the notes of a nomad, um, and um, David, what about you? Uh, um, are you? Um, um, you? I, I think you. I, mean, I I somewhat qualify for it. I don't write the blogs. I have other people write them for me, but I I choose the topic and do the outline. And I'm not as I've been doing websites more than anything else right now so i haven't done it for a little while mm. gotta get back into it i'm starting to uh a new website for solar power mm -hmm. and um wow. gonna be hitting that hot and heavy in the first of the year right on okay so and uh javita i know that you write blogs don't you and what about blogs videos uh, no, at present, I'm concentrating on blogs and I try to um, um, write uh, daily, uh, at least uh, five times a week. So wow. that's my schedule. Wow, I'm impressed. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. So um, that it must be difficult, though, to come up with an idea, a new idea every day. Uh, no, actually, because uh, most of the times I write uh, product reviews mm -hmm. and uh, there are a ton of products available online um, that I review. So mm -hmm. not that much are difficult for me to uh, search for the topics or the review products. Uh -huh. So and uh, that uh, you're you uh, raise something that um, is is something to uh, that makes it quite different for us. If we are doing um, product, actual physical products, um, it's easy to find products and to write something about them, etc. But when you are doing something like what I'm doing, my two sites are kind of services and um so it's it's a quite a different approach absolutely, absolutely. yeah so and and alana what about you i know you bet you have done some some uh blogs in the past and i know that um you've been giving some thoughts to vlogs Uh, well, I'd say it's kind of on the long finger right now because um, I'm writing for other pe pe people. So um, I don't really have time to write for myself anymore. So I'm not sure because my business has kind of taken a different turn. I've kind of pivoted it a little bit. So mm -hmm. most of my writing, most of my blog writing is for other pe people besides myself. So um, 
and yeah, so, I, I, and and so yeah. therefore they are the ones that come up with the ideas, and you do the writing. Yeah, I do the research and the writing, and mm -hmm. you know, depending on what our agreement is, source other information for them. So, um, yeah, so I, I'm not really blogging for myself. I'm more or less writing for other people. Mm -hmm. Well, and um, so it's your other people that um, would be interested in this topic more than you, I guess. <laughs> well, I mean, I, you know, from a research standpoint, because I do a lot of research, I always come across things I can write about for myself and I usually make a note of them and I keep a list. So if by chance I ever do get a chance to write for myself, I have a list that I go to. Right on. Now, what about you, Vivek? Um, I used to create uh, video blogs, known as vlogs, um, but these days haven't done for a long, long time. Uh, I do have a plan to create quite a few. I, I have, in fact, I have a list in front of me here <laughs> of uh, videos that I want to create. Um, it's, it's a question of time when I'll be able to do them. <laughs> let, let, me, let me give you one or two of them. Uh, first one is how to present Google Slides with yourself showing on camera in the video. Mm -hmm. How to share Google Drive effectively. Mm -hmm. How to collaborate using Google Drive mm -hmm. and so on. So it, the, the list is, uh, and, and uh, another one which may be more relevant for lots of people, how to manage your smartphone. <laughs> It should not be that, I mean, you should be smarter than your phone, not the other way around. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good, that's a good uh, a lead in to, for a good topic. Yeah, for sure. Um, when you get the, uh, the Google Drive one done, please let me know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and um, I have a, I have a, a colleague and friend here in Victoria who, um, said to me like maybe last week that her plan for the new year was to learn more about google drive mm -hmm. so and she was thinking well she had to go online and find a course and i said no 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 you don't need to find a course you've got two friends me and my <laughs> friend that know uh, <laughs> something about that <laughs> so uh, we've got we've got uh, we've got some ideas for sure, but uh, so I mean we're all doing something, and I I guess my question is, um, do do you ever do do you ever do your ideas ever dry up on you? Like do you just finally get to the point where you can't think of anything? Um... No. It, it's a case where I, I, I don't see them drying up, but I do see them as, uh, for example, if you, if you do a search on YouTube for any of the things that I talk about, you'd find plenty of videos. But I, my aim is to bring something unique into mm -hmm. the whole thing. So yeah. that's where my value addition will happen. Mm -hmm. So um, so the, the problem I often have is I look at a uh, idea and then say, what can I add to whatever is being mm -hmm. explained and discussed and so on. And that's, Sometimes that's where I get stuck. Mm. So the the uniqueness, the the um, yeah. the topics, right? What about um, so? 
I, I like I noticed myself, uh, and uh, that comes up uh, in this success circle. I mean, we we have uh, after the show um, stops recording, we quite often have this conversation. Okay, so we've got to plan out some topics for next month. What are we going to talk about? <laughs> so we, um, I, I mean, I. I try to keep a list um, um, for for topics, but eventually you run out. After four or five years, you start to run out of, out of new ideas. So, I um, mean, in terms of this, I'm thinking, um, um, you know, the, uh, in terms of ideas for our discussions, we could probably go back to some of those early things and review them or go, you know, because things change big time. So I have thought about doing that. But, uh, and I find sometimes that when I'm looking for a topic to blog about, it's an offshoot of what we have talked about here. And so sometimes I can, I can uh, bounce off of that. But, um, I mean, this, this whole idea of, uh, rather than a product, uh, when you start looking at a service, then um, I think it uh, um, it becomes important to uh, to really explore in, in in my own mind or in our own mind is is who is the who am I doing this for? Who is the client that I'm doing this for? And what does this person need or want? Um, and so that's sometimes what what drives what uh, what what I'm able to come up with. And I know, uh, for example, Fred, when you're doing your notes of a nomad, you often say uh, who this uh, who your notes are for. You say it right up front. This is for my grandchildren and my family so that they know what I'm up to. So um, that that must help you a little bit uh, by sort of being able to say, well, here's what I'm up to right now. But you still must. Uh, and I noticed that you um, you go uh, you go back through some of your your pictures, I think. Um, what else? What what other? What else goes on in your head as you're trying to decide? Because you do you do bring up um, you have topic ideas that come up as well. I review a lot of well the one book that helps me, ah. and I don't have a lot of books. Is like I probably told you about Tools of Titans. Hmm. I think you it's, might have, yeah. It, the interviews of ta Tim Ferriss of a hundred and let me, in fact, I counted them. So I didn't make a note, 113 people that he has interviewed over the time of his podcast. Mm -hmm. And there are people in here, well, Arnold Schwarzenegger has been interviewed and he wrote the, the forward. But there's an enormous amount of people, very well known. They're all, as it says, the tactics, routines, and habits of billionaires, icons, and world-class performers. Wow. <laughs> and these are the people. And so those interviews, he's taken the highlight of what they've said, and he's put it in his book. Mm -hmm. I review that book every day, maybe just 10 minutes. And mm -hmm. I just go through it uh, for 10 minutes, and I have underlined certain things that, in fact, uh, I, I I know where I am. I just did it for today, mm -hmm. and there was a couple of things underlined, and I, I I underlined items, and that helps me sometimes say, hey, that that resonates with me, and I think other people might be interested in that particular mm -hmm. topic. So, I I then use that. That's a great source for me. It's mm -hmm. it's actually worked very well, mm -hmm. but also I listen to a lot of podcasts. Mm -hmm. And uh, there sometimes something triggers. I said, that is a great technique. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And it's all about, like, I'm on my own. I have to have a routine. Otherwise, I don't know what I'd be doing watching television, which I hate. Anyway, I don't do that. Uh, but, and I don't watch movies. So uh, I'm interested in what's going on in the world. And the World Economic Forum has a weekly item what's going on in the world from their point of view. That's another source sometimes. I find little gems in, in mm -hmm. what they're writing about. And sometimes it's with, about children. But I'm looking, that's two sources I have. I'm looking for, first of all, notes of a nomad, things that I can, I think maybe my grandchildren or family at least know, hey, he's still alive. He hasn't died on the boat, you know. And, and, uh, and we haven't heard from him. And, and my daughter in Australia used to often say, Dad, we haven't heard from you. Where are you all right? So this is one of the reasons that I do it. But also to pass on some techniques that I found very helpful, that I'm doing stuff at my age, and I'm interested, and it might help other people. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got a fellow in, in the United States who's bought a rowing machine because of me. And now he talks to me about the rowing machine and how it's working and any tips and, and so on. So that sort of stuff uh, I feel that I can share. That's the one side. So I don't find that too difficult, that particular one. It's the young people. I've been writing a blog post for five years now, and now I'm running out of topics. And that's a challenge because it's how we can work with youth. Uh -huh. And I do get sources. And, and in fact, it's waning like yourself. I used to write every week and then three times a month. And in fact, the last one's over a month old. And I'm working on one, but mm -hmm. it's what I'm doing with the fellow in Nepal. And I, don't, I say, well, I want to, we're having the meeting on Sunday. So I said, no, I, I think I'll wait until that, then maybe that'll help with the blog post. So that's the challenge I'm having is more topics for the youth. Mm -hmm. I've probably written about over 180, 190 different topics. And you start running out, like you said, after four or five years. But there are changes and there are updates. So you can go back and revisit. Mm -hmm. But still, it's not the same as when you started. But I find there's a couple of benefits. It's improved my writing skills. And it's also improved my knowledge. Because I've had to write about these topics and find out and it's helped me so i still want to continue because i want to continue improving my writing skills and i want to continue um, improving my knowledge about working with young people uh -huh. so that's the benefit for me the challenge is who's who's the audience and that i think is a very good question who is the audience who are you writing for well, that can help and I, I, as I was thinking about our topic today, I did write down a few ideas. So under uh, the very first thing I wrote down was it's important that uh, we visualize who we are writing or are uh, um, blogging for and what are they looking for right now. And so um, that was a reminder to me to go back to my avatar because I did create one a long time ago. So I, I did that. I went back to that avatar uh, whose name is Claire. It's a fictitious name, but that's my avatar's name. And I asked myself what would be helpful to Claire. And so as I was looking at that, I realized what Claire needs all the time is she needs to feel uh, creative and in control. And she needs to believe that she can really do it. And she needs some stimulation from colleagues and she needs ideas. So those were the things that I came away with just by looking at my at, at Claire's uh, content. So, um, and those, those ideas and those things are related to the services that um, I provide. Being able to, um, to do things online and learning how to, and learning how to do things, but to, to gain the confidence and, and the ability to do it. So um, 
So that I, I mean, and, and it was really interesting because um, I have some ideas for the new year, and this um, going back to that avatar kind of come back, uh, brought back a few ideas for going forward. So that was really, really a, a helpful thing to do. So uh, remembering who you're, who you're, who you are writing for. Now, as I think about this, and I'm 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 thinking about Javita. I mean, you're writing for people who have an interest in a specific product, and they are looking for uh, other people's um, experience with that specific product. So, um, so it's it's easier. I'm thinking um, to know. Who, who, what your client, what the person you're writing for, you, you kind of know what they're looking for. What's a, what, what is, what, is, what, how does it compare to other things? Uh, what, it, what about its price? How does it function? And all of those. I and mean, it's a pretty kind of standard thing that they are looking for. Right. But what about your, your other uh, blogs that you do uh, that are not product based? How, I mean, how do you, do you um do you find yourself going back to the 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 person you're writing for? Um, my other blog is about uh, Reiki, mm -hmm. that is energy healing. Mm -hmm. So uh, um, that way that becomes uh, very easy for me because when you uh, know your niche, then you exactly know the what people are looking for that in that particular niche. Like when I talk about Reiki, I exactly know what the people uh, may be wanting to know about that uh, subject. Mm. Um, because generally, uh, when people uh, don't know ki what the Reiki is all about, then the my topics will be like, ki what is Reiki and how it will be help, uh, helpful in uh, mm -hmm. uh, all levels, like physically, mentally, emotionally, how Reiki helps and all that kind of things. Mm -hmm. So when you know, uh, and a Reiki is a very specific niche. Mm -hmm. So that way I know ke, uh, how can I branch out that uh, niche mm -hmm. and what uh, my audience looking for in that niche. So that becomes a bit easier because uh, I'm um, working with Reiki for many years now. Mm -hmm. So that becomes a little bit easier to write about uh, these things. Mm -hmm compared to um, online uh, means um, advantage affiliates. But uh, for that also I'm writing for uh, now at least two years. So mm -hmm. uh, you get to know the things. Right. Well, and so again, you point up uh, to something that's, that's um, important. I mean, when you're, when you're looking, uh, deciding on your niche, um, if you can narrow it down a bit, ma it makes it easier. Whereas um, when I created both of my websites, they're very, very wide niches. Being your own CEO, I mean, yes, it's uh, the 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 the, um, the intent is to work with solopreneurs, and same with my coaching work. But coaching is is it covers a huge a variety of topics especially if you're thinking about becoming a solopreneur or if you are one so um so it it, it um but it's a lot of it is, uh, is speculation i think on my part more than it should be so yeah so um Anybody else have uh, anything they they would like to contribute in terms of uh, visualizing who you are writing for and what you what you need to consider? Anything else come come up on that, uh, Alana? I find um, a lot of times if I'm reading blogs and doing research sometimes when you're reading a blog a question will pop into your head and if it's not answered in the blog that's where you can get an idea on what to write about you can expand on that mm -hmm. and and provide information that no one has pr provided yet so that's one thing that i kind of do 
Boy, and that takes a lot of time to do that kind of research. <laughs> and so that was going to be uh, my my list of things that I wrote down was um, the the well, first of all, to do some keyword research. And uh, I, I mean, that is a huge topic in and of itself. And um, um, I've been watching um, um, some, some videos uh, by Ahrefs. The, there's, a new, uh, there's a new site now. Um, it used, it, it's not new, but it, it used to be um, a premium only kind of site. But now they have a free version. It might be sort of a, 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 a watered down version. But I've been watching quite a few um, videos on how to make really, really good use of Ahrefs. And of course, with our WA, we um, there's a lot, there's lots about using Jaxi as well. But um, I'm thinking I'm I'm thinking about this whole business about research, and um, I I should really. Um, Say that I I uh, give some some um, um, kudos to Nathaniel because I did watch his his um, videos um, on you on WA about you know finding uh, topics and all of that and um, one of the things that he talked about was uh, how important it is to Go out and and do your do lots of research on social media. So he talked about ways to go in and search uh, on on various topics on Twitter using a hashtag. And he mentioned another one called Yahoo Answers, which was new to me. I've never never um, uh, heard of that one before. And then there was Quora. These are some. Um, Places that people go and and uh, ask questions, and Pinterest. Um, I was in there uh, yesterday looking around at um, all of the um, suggestions. And um, you, you, you I mean, when you go to any one of these sites, you have to do, you have to um, do a search, and you have to you have to have a fairly broad topic to uh, to uh, to put in there. But uh, then there's another one called Reddit, and of course LinkedIn and Instagram and Facebook. So he was he was recommending that when you're looking for for, for ideas, even for keyword ideas, that it's important to do to do that kind of research. So when you do that that level of research, you really have to devote a, a, a good big chunk of time to do that and that's when you need to do as as Alana uh, mentioned already is to um, start a list so that you um, you can um, milk all the ideas out of all those all of those places that you're researching so that you don't have to go back and redo that as often so that becomes really, really important. Um, what uh, um, uh, David and Vivek and everybody else? What what um, do you? Uh, where do you go to research things that you um, you're you're looking for ideas? I usually use Jaxi. Do you? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right now, the other thing that I've been doing is I also use the Alphabet Soup in, in Google, where I'll mm -hmm. put in either the one key main keyword or a, a group of words and then I'll add a at the end mm -hmm. and find topics that that come from that mm -hmm. and then once I've found a couple of those I'll throw them in Jaxi and see what they're searching like and that also generates a lot yeah. of ideas off of that mm -hmm. so yeah. that's generally how I go about doing it um so I also put in the link to uh, a couple links in the in the chat. I put in one. Jay recommends this book um, 
from Amazon, the one hour content plan. It will help you develop a content plan for a whole year. Um, that was one that he had recommended. And then I also put in the tools of a Titan and mm -hmm. Hrefs. Oh, yes. And there's a comment from uh, Bill. So he's saying going back and updating older videos with more experience and some older topics can be covered better, right? No kidding. <laughs> Since we've been doing all of this. Yeah. So um, another area that I thought of, yes, yep, definitely you can go in and, and start doing some research on um, various places on, on just doing a Google search. But you know, um, and I don't know why, I, I never think of doing research for ideas on YouTube. I mean, when I'm looking for something in particular that I want to know how to do, YouTube is the first place I go to. But for some reason, I never think to go there just to put in, um, you know, a, a search term and see what pops up. So that uh, came up for me. I mean, I realized that there's a place to uh, to go. You could also do the alphabet soup method in there. Math. Oh, you can. Oh, wow. Okay. That's a good idea. So um, any other, any, any anything else come up under um, where to go and do research? Uh, I've got another idea. And I believe this came from Jay a long time ago. Go to in, in, into um, the local pharmacy or the local bookstore and cruise the magazine racks and look at the look at all of the um, you know the especially the business section and just uh, do a do a, a cruise and see what just to find out what topics are, are really popular right now. Um, and, um, you know, what, what are they doing? Because um, uh, now for me, sometimes when I've done that, um, I realize they're writing about stuff that I wrote about a long time ago. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, some of them are not as up to date as maybe some of us are. But uh, it's still worth a look once in a while. See what, what comes up there. Um, but then um, the, um, I guess you, uh, you know, if you really wanted to uh, um, cruise the magazines, you might want to allocate a few dollars and go and buy a few, buy a few magazines. I mean, yes, when you're standing at, London drug in front of there. I mean, you, you can't actually go in and <laughs> it's without somebody raising an eyebrow if you haven't bought the magazine. So maybe you need, maybe, a, maybe we need to buy a few. So that might be um, uh, something to think about. Uh, David. Yes. So the library also offers magazines that you don't have to buy and you can just look at. And they have subscriptions to mm -hmm. a lot of different magazines and different topics. So you, you, you could go through there. Mm -hmm. good, good in the United States. Yeah. So, um, I, I mean, the more I think about this, the more I realize I need to, I need to allocate a full week and just plan on spending every single day just researching. What do you think about that? <laughs> I wouldn't advise it actually. You wouldn't, eh? <laughs> no, because you'll end up going down a black hole. <laughs> so what I try to do is I allocate time specifically for research and I write down what I'm looking for and I keep it in front of me. Mm -hmm. And that way, if I get sidetracked, um, I look down and I see, okay, I'm supposed to be looking for this. And then I get back on track. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't. Have, I I I think you'd burn out if you did a whole week's worth of research. I just think you you drive yourself nuts. Oh. So are you saying maybe spe a specific time uh, in every week? Spend a bit of time every week. Yeah, I mean, I'm not that structured with it. I mean, 
I, if I know I have to do it, I'll set aside some time, but it's not the same time every day or the same time every other day or whatever. Like if I know I have to do it, I'll just write it down and say, okay, I'm going to put an hour on this and see. And if I need more then I'll schedule another hour or, or I'll push something off. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, I try to put a time limit on it because otherwise I just get lost in the black hole. Yeah. Well, I think we've all been down those rabbit holes. So that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but um, I, I must say that um, in terms of an idealist, now I noticed uh, that Nathaniel, when he was doing his idealist, because he was, as he was um, running through his uh, little videos, he, he just used um, a plain sheet of writing down uh, things. But um, for me, I, I find using a spreadsheet um, works way better for me. Um, because with spreadsheets, you, I mean, the, the beauty of using a spreadsheet is you can, um, you can reorder them and put them in alphabetic order, or you can put them in a time order. There's, there's a variety of ways that you can sort uh, a spreadsheet. So uh, for me, it's way, way more uh, effective to use a spreadsheet. What do you use, Alana? Did you? That's oh. exactly what I use is a spreadsheet. And, yeah. and, and you can categorize things that way as well. I find I just, um, I type faster than I write. And if I write something down, I would normally end up putting it into my laptop anyway. So I just save myself that step. Uh -huh. I just type it out into a spreadsheet. And I do have two monitors. So I can have um, spreadsheet open on one monitor and my research open exactly. on another. So that way yeah. I can go back and forth. Yeah. Yeah, good plan. So now um, I'm, I was just noticing the time, um, the time lag. I wondered if any of you knew uh, this about Zoom. If you uh, are are muted and you hit the the space bar and hold the space bar down, it takes you off of mute. And then when you when you want to go back to mute, you just let go of the space bar. Did everybody know that? Yeah. I, 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 I've discovered so many people in our choir. I mean, we have to remind them every once in a while because they get, they get, especially if you've only got one screen, they get looking around trying to figure out where, where is everything and so forth. So yeah, that's all you have to do is hit the space bar. <laughs> Sometimes the space bar doesn't work though. If you've been doing something else, you got to be careful. You're hitting the space bar and it's not working, but if you, have muted and unmuted and you don't touch anything else, then it still works, but you got to be careful. You can yeah. disable the space bar without knowing it. And you're hitting space bar and nothing's happening. So yes. Be uh, I discovered that as well. So when, when the space bar doesn't work for you, just take yourself off, 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 off of mute and back on again, and then it will work. So that's just put the black area above everybody and gets me on on the, the website. What happens is, is I'll be I'll go in and add stuff to chat and then I'll come back and hit the space bar and nothing happens. <laughs> and all I do is just click yeah. up on the top just so I, you know. Yeah. So it's 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 really um, <laughs> it's sure, sure helpful with uh, with our choir because there's 50 people come in every time for the choir. So <laughs> anyway, that's a little bit off topic. Um, so Alana, you're saying you're, are you, and did you answer my question? <laughs> and we you're can't hear me. you. I'm using the space bar and it's not working. Which question am I answering? That, that I that I texted you about. Oh yes. Um, yeah, I didn't know we had a, a, a firm and hard date, um, but that'll work for me. And I don't remember the topic, but I'll go back and reread the okay. notes we've been exchanging. And yeah, okay. I'll take care of that. Okay. Yeah, that'll be one of my Christmas projects. 
So we are um, we are at the almost ten two. So it would be um, a good idea for us, unless we have any further ideas. Um, Fred, you feel like a, a, a last word today? I'm trying to unmute. <laughs> Yeah, always, always. I appreciate you asking. I think the main thing that Elana said that really resonated with me, you can go down a black hole. And research is something we're talking about. And exactly that was going through my mind. And when she said that. so what I suggest and what I do do is I have these power blocks of 25 minutes. So if I want to spend an hour, I will spend two 25 minute blocks with a break in between. So if I want to research, because you go down rabbit holes if you're not careful, and you're researching something and you hit something on YouTube, and before you know it, you're watching something else that you weren't even researching. So a 25-minute block, I have a timer, and it beeps at me after 25 minutes, and I say, and that's a Pomodoro method, actually. That's mm -hmm. the, the tomato in, in yeah. any way. Let's not go down rabbit hole. But I think that's important. So I think her suggestion was powerful. I She said, I devote an hour to it. And I devote two 25 minute sessions to it if I have an hour. But it mm -hmm. does make a difference because, wow, research, you can, I, I mean, there's so many interesting things in the universe. You'll go down and you'll find all these things and you won't make that list that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And that list is important. And I use some lists as well. Uh, so that, that, I think, those are the things. And then the other thing that I thought was very pertinent was who are you writing for? Mm -hmm. If you don't know that, you're, you're, there's a big challenge. So those are those are the things I think help you when you're writing a blog post. Who you're writing for, how you find the the topics with research, have a list, and don't go down rabbit holes. So those are the things that I took away. Be careful. So that's it for me. <laughs> right on. So final word from Bill says, speak because you have something to say, not because you have to say something. <laughs> So that that is really good when uh, when you're thinking about writing blogs, <laughs> you've got to have something to say. <laughs> so you are so uh, you are so right, Bill. So um, and um, last words. If not, I will uh, remind everyone it's important to do what you love with passion, and to remind you that next week. Um, we are going to talk about our favorite WordPress plugins. Um, my goodness, I've got lists everywhere of uh, WordPress plugins. Anyway, um, that's going to be the topic. And I need to let everyone know that then the following week, the 29th, there will, we are going to take a break. So there will be no success circle on the 29th. And then the next one will be on the 5th of January. And uh, I'm going to have um, um, that one may not be a recorded one. I'm planning on something for us all to come together and have a discussion about. And I, I'm thinking that uh, we would all feel more comfortable about that topic. Uh, if we're not recording. So the next recorded uh, session will be on the 12th of January. So having said that, uh, I wish you, I bid you all good health and peace and joy in this tough time. But we got, uh, we got a bit of good news here in British Columbia this morning. The, um, the, the, the vaccinations have arrived and the first ones are being done in Vancouver and uh, here on the island it'll be next week uh, so um, with that ha ha pardon me having said that I wish you all um, a very very peaceful and restful and inspirational um, season so now what do I need to do I need to do all four Thank mm -hmm.